It's a disappearing act which has taken nearly three years to perform. There was no sleight of hand in demolishing what used to be the tallest structure on the Sellafield site, but hey presto, we've now done it. The West Cumbrian skyline changed forever. The demolition work was carried out by specialists working on a three-storey platform which hung in the air, clinging on to the ventilation stack using the friction from supporting bands wrapped round it. The platform took ten months to pull itself up the stack, a metre at a time, like a monkey shinning up a tree. Once it reached the top, 125 metres above ground level, the demolition work could start. There's uh, two main elements of work. There's the flue liner removal, which you won't see from here. Uh, that's inside the windshield. Um, we cut the flue liner with uh, plasma cutters and that material comes out of the stack piecemeal and goes away for recycling. Uh, and then there's the windshield uh, wall demolition, which we achieve through core drilling and uh, hydraulic bursting of the concrete. It's then handballed down via the alley mac and uh, goes to Klesser. As each layer was demolished, the platform was then lowered a metre at a time. Just doing this involved around 1,700 different tasks, with a further 2,500 safety checks for every metre's descent. It had to be done safely and slowly because the stack was towering above one of the most congested nuclear sites in the world, with the buildings below containing active nuclear material. The potential risk of collapse and the danger that would pose to the outside world was why it had to be demolished in the first place. Safety is our number one priority on the platform. We check all the Alimac cliffs before we actually send anybody up to the platform. We also then check the platform before we allow anybody onto the platform. We also have a couple of safety features on the platform. We have a flue liner platform which sits inside the flue liner and it allows two inches all the way around so nobody can fall down the flue liner. And we also have an annulus platform which sits in between the windshield wall and the flue liner. This is also acts as a safety feature stopping anybody from falling down. We're working out it's something I've done for the last 20 years. It can get nerve-wracking, but it's, it's part and parcel of what we do. This is like the fourth time we've used this rig. You know, we've used it at Battersea, but this one's unique to, to this site and the complications that come with it. Collaboration has been absolutely key to the success of this project. Uh, it doesn't matter which badge they've been wearing, SL, Nuvia, Delta, Alimac, we've all been pulling in the same direction and it's paid dividends. You can see the success that that approach has had for us. Grafting in this most exposed of workplaces was often challenging. You know, in the Cumbrian weather it can be very testing at times, particularly in the winter, uh, and we probably only get four good weeks in summer, so quite enjoyable working up there in summertime, but winter time can be particularly testing. Um, I think we got to minus 14 wind chill at times, um, so, but you've just got to roll with it really and get on with the job. Over 400 tonnes of concrete removed by hand. 30 tonnes of steel cut and removed. The self-climbing platform has now touched down to the end of its mission, leaving a small nine metre stub which can be safely demolished without the need to defy gravity and cling on. This team has delivered an important milestone in our decommissioning story.